everyone. This is Willow Dawn with Whispering Rose Handmade Soap Shop. Um, today I'm going to do a very much requested video on how I uh, form my soap roses. Um, for this project you're going to need of course some soap dough and you'll need a sharp knife or a exacto knife. <clears throat> You'll need some rose cutters or three sizes of cookie cutters. Round ones will do. Or if you um, if you want to make it even easier, um, you can check out some stores that uh, specialize in gum paste um, flowers um, and get some rose cutters um, for, for gum paste. They work just as well. And then <clears throat> again for the bottom of the rose you're going to need what they call a calyx. This is the, the green leaves that are underneath your rose. I usually hand form my um, leaves um, but there are leaf cutters or leaf cookie cutters that you can get. You can also use those. In the center, um, I just put some um, calendula leaves. Now, for a big rose like this, and this is the first rose I made for the first video, but that didn't turn out very well. Um, it, it was just too long, so we decided to go ahead and try and make another video, and I'll redo the roses. Um, the calyx also can be made out of a star template and that's what I use for the bigger roses. Um, and the size of rose I'm going to make today I'm going to use my star that I've cut out. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, another thing that you're probably going to need um, is 91% rubbing alcohol and I put this in a spray bottle. Um, I use this at the very end when I'm finished making my rose. Um, if, you, if you have trouble rolling, you'll want to go ahead and use an acrylic um, rolling pin or even um, a little uh, wooden rolling pin would help. But if you do that, you're going to want to um, uh, go ahead and and just wet, wet your um, paper just a tiny bit to keep the soap from sticking. And then of course you'll need a little spatula to pull up your um, soap off the bottom. This is my very first instructional video. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, this is a recipe that I developed um, just playing around with some soap one day um, and wondering if I could sculpt it because I am a sculptor um, with uh, polymer clays. Um, let's go ahead and start it out. First you're going to want to make a cone. This is the center of your rose and in a rose you're going to have all um, odd numbered petals. The first petal that you're going to do is one and I've already um, cut some out so that the video isn't so long but if you see this clay is um, pretty um, pretty easy to work with. And I also um, recommend sanitizing your hands well and um, also using distilled water when you are um, using it to help smooth your clay and forming your petals. Um, you're going to go ahead and um, wet your fingertips just a tiny bit and wet your fingers a tiny bit wet your palm just a little bit and I just flatten it out in my hand and I usually get the petal to be about maybe a quarter to an eighth of an inch thick and um, the first petal I'm going to do is um, I'll use the smooth side 
If you want really, really nice ruffled ones, you can use the ruffled side of the cutter, but I use the smooth side because I usually ruffle them out with my fingertips anyway. And then just pull it off like that and pop it through and you've got a nice round circle. Wet your fingers just a tiny bit and I usually keep on pulling and pinching on the edges and it forms a slight teardrop and keep on forming them like this and then put it in your palm and kind of cup it so that it comes down into a, um, a little uh, teardrop. Cut off any excess and wet your cone just some on the bottom too because that's where you're going to attach petals also. And the first petal is just one and raise it up just a bit just a bit over your center cone. Bring it around, smooth out your soap, bring it around some more, and then flip the edges a little bit like that. Um, Go ahead and cut that excess off, smooth underneath. Doesn't have to be perfect here because that's going to be on the inside, but you want it to adhere well so that it doesn't fall apart on you. <clears throat> that that is the beginning of your rose. Now I've cut out a couple extra so we won't take so much time in cutting out and again I'm going to go ahead and smooth it out. Keep pinching your edges, ruffle those edges up some, thin them out, bring it down into a teardrop and you're making yourself a petal here and then cup it. I want a little bit more water because it helps to glide and smooth out your soap. Now don't worry because this is all going to dry and it's going to dry back hard. <clears throat> and then just, I'm going to attach three on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and start it right about there and I'm going to raise it up, bring it around and Blend it in. Blend it in on this side and flip those <clears throat> petals a little bit out. Now, there we're starting to see a bud. <clears throat> Here's your third petal. I started on the bottom with this one making it a teardrop and then I'm just going to feather out and pinch out, thin out. <clears throat> As you can see how thin that is. You don't want it too thin but then you don't want it too thick but you want it thin enough to where it looks natural. And then I cup it again and then you overlap just a tad bit on that one. Bring it around and blend it in on the bottom and underneath. Again, flip your petals out just a tad bit. It's really starting to look like a, a rose now. <clears throat> now, you can leave it like that for a rosebud and 
put your third one on and then you can make a calyx and just have a bud that's just as pretty or you can just keep on going and we're having a petal uh, sequence of uh, one three and five on this rose. I'm not going to do a real big one like I did last video. Um, took too long, but you can keep going. You'll have all always remembers opposite, you know, um, and odd uh, numbers. Overlap that just like this. Bring it around and blend in. Flip your petal out. Blend in on this side too, and also underneath. And there's your bud. Okay, so now you see that we have a really, really sweet rosebud. Um, as I said before, you can take this bud and you can. Um, Go ahead and form your calyx out of one of the smaller um, cutters, or you can just keep on going. And I'm going to keep on going until I have it um, done. So we've done the center, one, and then the three, and now we're going to do the next size up. And I've already cut out the circles. So I'm going to wet my finger just a little bit and pull and ruffle, pull and ruffle. Yep, I pulled a little too hard on that one. Um, and just keep on pulling and ruffling. And then cup it in your hand and bring it down with your finger. With your damp finger into a teardrop this is the next size and of course you can make it a little bit bigger just by thinning it out so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it about that size and it looks like a petal and I like to ruffle it and you can keep ruffling it <clears throat> as much as you want um, you'll have to excuse the camera um, this is my very very first instructional video and um, I'm sorry if I get out of frame or anything you know um, I'm a little bit nervous and I hope uh, you enjoy this um, video uh, I enjoy making them I love sculpting and um, with this clay you can also um, you know form your own little fruits and embeds for the top of your your soap loaves and as you can see I went ahead and I attached that petal between these two petals and then I'm going to attach another petal here slightly o overlapping so we'll do that and we're going to put five <clears throat> there'll be five on this row and this will be my last row because we're not going to make a huge rows like I did in the last video, like I said earlier. Um, however, the large rows will be up um, in a drawing um, for U.S. residents only. And um, we're going to um, draw a name out of the people, you know, all of you that want to comment on my video and subscribe to my channel and share my video um, so we'll we'll draw a name on that at the end of the month so here we got the next petal wet it just a little bit because you want to make sure it sticks slightly overlap and then you blend in the bottom Bend out your petal a little bit because this is this is the last row I'm going to do. So we're going to we're going to put five on it. 
and I'll come back as soon as um, I get all five on there and then we'll do the calyx okay we're back and this time I've got the green soap clay and as you can see it's smooth stretches um, the recipe allows you to use hot process cured soap and also cold process cold soap um, both both soaps can be used in this tallow soaps lard soaps vegan soaps um, can also be used in this recipe so all soap will work with this recipe um, just uh, kneading the soap and I'm going to be flattening it out because right now I'm going to do a calyx out of my star and I want to go ahead and flatten it not too thin for this because this is going to go on to the underside and um, I'm going to also do a little bit of stretching with it so let me go ahead and flatten it a bit and then I'll put the star on it and um, I cut it out just with a sharp paring knife and we'll keep these keep your end other other pieces because those are going to be for your leaves that's my coffee pot you hear I don't know about you but I'm a coffee holic I don't drink sodas. <clears throat> Love coffee. Gotta have my coffee. Alright, it's sticking a little bit, so what I'll do is I'll use a little spatula or even a butter knife um, and just work it up and off. And you see, it is a little thick but that's okay because you're going to add a little water and make sure it's distilled you don't want tap water and go ahead and stretch the edges and smooth those edges and stretch the ends of the points because you want it to look natural like it's part of the the rose and just stretch it and if one breaks off it's okay because you can always stick a leaf over top of it and it won't show make the ends pointed okay now make an indentation smooth it out as best as you can you can also smooth it with a wet paintbrush of water that's uh, fairly stiff okay you're going to bend it up you're going to make a little indentation because that's where you want your rose to stick Take a little bit of water and a paintbrush. And you want to wet the other side too. Wet that underside. And kind of press that on there on the edges and work with it
bend it so that it sticks onto your petal. And, and if it doesn't stick onto your petal, you can always take a little piece like of, of soap, clay, and, um, you know, just use it as like a little putty piece. Blend it in. This is, I think, the hardest part to me. Um, is is um, attaching the calyx because at the same time you're attaching it, you don't want to break this the little points, but you want it to stick, and you don't want to flatten these out because see here I flattened it. So what I'm going to do is take a little little bitty knife and just push up your petal again. You don't want them flattened. Just, just raise them a little bit again. It, it takes a little practice, but it all comes together in the end. Okay, see so I bent that. And that you can just take a paintbrush and with water and smooth it out. Um, you can work, if you've ever worked with clay or polymer clay, um, uh, you can you can just treat it like that. I know with earth clays, I use a lot of water when I used to do some pottery years and years ago. Um, with polymer clay, I used mineral oil or um, a Sculpey um, softener, clay softener, and it all works. Um, pretty well in uh, smoothing out those doll heads that I did. <clears throat> okay, now that I've got that done, what I want to do is I want to, um, I want to add some stamens. This is optional, but, um, I think this is going to make it look a little bit more realistic as well. And what I did was I took some calendula um, leaves that are dried and I put a very, very thin uh, floral wire around a bunch of them. And I got the calendula from a friend of mine who owns a store online. Her name is Terry Coover. She's an absolute doll. She will help you with anything you want. And if she doesn't have it in stock, she'll find it for you. And um, her uh, website is chic, chic and sassy bath and body dot com. And that's C H I C A N D S A S S Y bath, B-A-T-H, and A-N-D, body, B-O-D-Y, dot com. You've got to, you got to visit her. She's got um, anything you need for soaping. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to slightly flatten this area out in the center. Now you can make your center to where that doesn't even show. And you don't even have to use one of these. And I just push the wire straight through to the back and pull it. And there you go. And then what I do is I'll cut that wire right off. Now, of course, if you give these as gifts, you need to put a little bit of a, um, a warning that there is a wire there. And um, you can add a little bit of soap clay to that to um, cover that and it doesn't stick anybody. And normally I don't I don't do these like that but but this time um, I'm going to enter this in a um, contest that Terry's having at Elite Soapers uh, Bath and Body Group on Facebook. And um, 
the contest is that you have to um, have a floral soap and you must use a real bit of flour, dried flour or, or whatever in your soap. And this is the best I can come up with because I haven't done a calendula soap yet. Um, I have done um, just uh, essential oil soaps and fragrance oil soaps with uh, mica and colorings. And, um, the last soap I did, I did a um, Titanic reproduction and I also did a um, uh, orange blossom where I actually used soap clay to sculpt my oranges and um, I piped the leaves. Also did the orange blossoms out of the soap clay that were real teeny tiny and I had to use toothpick to help with that. So there you have it for this. Um, the next is the leaves and what I do with the leaves is I just go ahead and um, make a ball, flatten it out, pull it a little bit and kind of form it into a long teardrop and I smooth it with water. both sides because you're gonna you'll see both sides if you turn the stick your knife in your water and then you're going to add the veining and then I just I don't even count I just add a little little lines. Um, no two roses I make or or what you make are even going to be exactly alike because they're handmade. And like I said you can do this with using any of your cold process recipes or your hot process recipes. Tallow, lard, or um, olive oil, uh, shea butter recipes. Um, seems to work with all of the soaps. It's just a matter of uh, taking the time to make it. Okay. And what I do with this is I just take it and I'll wet it a little bit and I'll put it here and I kind of blend it in. And it's just like clay if you look at it feels like clay. And we'll be back and after the break to do the, the next leaf. Okay. We're back and as you can see I added the leaves and raised up my petals some because they got mushed a bit when I was putting the back on. This is the back and you can see it still needs a little bit more smoothing so you just take a little bit of water and smooth it out and then you can just display it like this in a basket or flatten out the bottom and you can um, let it sit, you know, stand up. Now, I'm going to do a little bit something different with this one because you can do this as well, but I've got Merlot Sparkle from Brambleberry and um, it's a beautiful burgundy um, mica. Um, and I have uh, taken it with a little bit of alcohol and mixed it up with a brush and the brush is fairly stiff but I, I want to go ahead and just do what they call a dry brush technique on this and I want to do just the tips 
so I'm going to take and just brush the tips some to give it a little bit of shadow and depth a little bit more color so it's not just a blah all all over just pink um, and just do the edges of course you want to do it in up and down motion don't go straight across like this just brush it like this you're going to add that mica shimmer and sparkle to it now you can do the whole le uh, the whole petal um, be pretty too but um, this gives it a little bit more realistic look to it as well because I, I know I've seen some roses this this way naturally as well and don't mix the mica with oil because it's just going to uh, make your soap gooey you don't want that you just you want to just go ahead and do it with uh, with alcohol okay I think that'll do it now I want to give out some shout outs to some people that really really inspired me and uh, taught me a lot about soap and soap making in a really short time um, I've spent hours and hours watching Catherine McInnes with Soaping 101 thank you Kathy um, you're an awesome teacher um, Katie White with Royal Tea Soaps girl you inspire me to no end Crystal Star um, with Star Soaps over there in New Zealand thank you for always always encouraging me as well as um, Sharon Johnson um, with uh, Rose of Sharon uh, Essential Body uh, soaps and care I'm um, sorry if I don't get that right Sharon uh, my it's one o'clock in the morning here and I am beat so here you go here's your beautiful rose soap and very easy to make and um, if you like what you see and you want to see more types of flowers and um, other things that you can sculpt out of soap um, like like my channel um, subscribe comment and share my video and um, we're going to we're going to have a drawing for this one see the difference in size we're going to draw for this one um, at the end of the month um, share my channel subscribe and we're going to have a random drawing uh, for this beautiful large soap and I'll put this in a gift basket so that you can display it in your bathroom or in your bedroom it smells wonderful it is uh, scented with uh, rose and um, the leaves are scented with uh, uh, lemongrass I believe it is but thank you for watching and um, next time if you all like my channel I'll show you how to make a magnolia and other items um, this is Willow Dawn with, Will with Whispering Rose Handmade Soap Shop and uh, have a good night. Thank you. Bye.